Hungarian folk tales. The Contrary Wife and the Devil. Once upon a time there lived a woman who was very contrary. One day her husband told her to take his lunch to the field an hour early. So instead she took it out an hour late. Another time he told her to take better food out to him. But instead she took worse. Eventually her husband learned to make his requests backwards and said, Well, well wife, do not bring stuffed chicken and pancakes to me today because they are not the kind of food to eat out in the field. It's true his wife took the food out earlier that day, but she did take her husband his stuffed chicken and pancakes. The next day her husband got hard to work and dug a deep pit at the end of the field and the farmer's wife came to him with his food for lunch. The couple soon settled down next to the pit and the man said to his wife, Wife of mine, do not go near to the pit because you will surely fall into it. But the man's wife still ventured close to the pit. Wife of mine, take care and do not fall into the pit. But the man's wife fell right to the bottom of the deep pit. Ha hey! Then the man left his wife where she was and he went home for his supper. The contrary wife tried hard to climb out of the pit, but it proved pointless. I would even thank the devil if he got me out of here. Well, here I am, the devil said to the wife. I came to get you out. Climb onto my back. So the wife climbed onto the devil's back and he pulled her out of the pit. Then the devil said to her, now you can get off. And the woman said, I will not. So the devil said, then take good care because you will soon fall off. And the devil began to dash madly around the land. Soon the devil grew tired and he said to the woman, get off my back this minute. And the woman said, no, I will not. The devil was tired out and he said to the old woman, now get off my back. No, I will not. The devil was desperate and did not know what to do next. Then he saw a soldier riding by and said, good hussar, if you can get this woman off my back, I will make you king. So the hussar got off his horse, walked cursing over to the woman and told her if she did not get off, he would cut her in two with his sharp sword. But the wife said, no, I will not. So the brave hussar fought the woman with his sword. Get off his back, good woman, or I will end your life. No, I will not. Then the hussar said, if you won't, then stay sitting on the devil. So then the woman said, no, I will not. And she leapt off the devil's back and the devil vanished. The hussar went on his way the following day and the devil was waiting for him under a bridge as he planned to crown him king. The devil saw the hussar riding towards him. He poked his head out from under the bridge and shouted, Fine hussar, the woman isn't still here, is she? She is not, do not fear. And as the hussar reached him, the devil said, Now I will make you king. You must go to the king's daughter and during your journey I will possess her soul. And then her hand will be promised to the man who can drive me out of her. But no one will be able to do this, only you. You simply have to say, jump out because I want to take her. But should I possess another of his daughters, you must not drive me out for then I will possess you and you will never be free of me again. So now the hussar travelled to the town where he heard the news that the king's daughter had been possessed by the devil. The decree 
was made that whosoever could drive the devil out would get the princess and half the kingdom. The hussar was delighted by this news and so he reported to the palace saying he could drive the devil out. He said to the devil, Jump out, devil, because I want to take her. Then the devil jumped out right away and plans were made for the royal wedding. Years passed and the news came that the devil had now possessed the king's second daughter. The hussar was asked to go out, but he was unwilling because he remembered what the devil had told him before. The hussar was promised treasure and many jewels, and so he eventually went. There he said to the devil, Devil, jump out of there too, because I want to take her. The devil jumped out right away and was about to attack the poor hussar when he stamped hard on his foot and said, Do you hear, devil? That woman is coming. Hearing this, the devil began to run and run and ran away forever and a day. Hungarian Folk Tales The Gold Coin and the Hat I want to tell you the story of three young men and a hat. The three young men were all big bearded fellows and one day they decided that the time had come to go out and seek their fortunes in the great wide world. They walked and walked until they came to a little village. And as they neared the village, they met an old man. And one of the young men said, How many days are there in the world, old man? One less with today, young man, the old man replied. And are there any good men left in the world? Roses still bloom even when they're surrounded by weeds. Now that was clever, the young man said. I'll ask you one more question. What does an old man have under his hat? Come to the inn, young men, and I'll tell you there. The young men were penniless, but they still went with the old man. But the old man was the first to enter, and he told the innkeeper to keep pouring them wine until they had five florins worth. So all four men took a seat at the table and the innkeeper poured wine and they drank it and had a very jolly time indeed. But when they had drunk five florins worth, the innkeeper stopped serving them and politely asked, Now, gentlemen, who will pay for all this fine wine? The young men would have willingly paid, but they were penniless. So then the hat will pay, the old man said and he took off his hat, shook it, and a gold coin fell out. The young men were very surprised by this sight and keen to get their hands on the old man's valuable hat. Then all they would have to do was to shake it and the ground would be covered in gold coins. They pleaded and appealed to the old man to sell them his hat and to name his prize. Very well, the old man said, 
you can see that I am indeed an old man, and so 500 florins would be enough for the few years I have left. So that is my price for the hat, young sirs. The young gentleman all ran to the Count and asked to borrow 500 florins, and the Count was happy to comply. So they paid the old man the price for the hat, and he went home. Then the hearty young fellows continued to eat and drink and make merry until a very late hour that night. And when the time came to pay, they shook the old man's hat, but nothing fell out. Not even a single gold coin. What were the poor fools to do? They could not pay, and so the innkeeper made them all stay and work to pay for the wine they had drunk that night. The moment the innkeeper let them go, they hurried to find the old man who had sold them the hat. Let's go and look for him in the village and we'll teach that old man a lesson for cheating us so. The old man got wind of their arrival and tried to hide all over the house, but his wife still found him wherever he hid. Then his wife said to him at last, You silly old fool, don't try and hide. It's much better if you pretend to be dead. Lie on the bench and I shall put a sheet over you, and when the young men come, I shall tell them that you're dead, and they will not be able to do a thing with a dead man. So that's exactly what they did, and the wife began to weep for her dead husband. Oh, my dearest darling husband, why did you die and leave me here all alone? When the young men appeared, they asked the wife why she was crying so. What happened? Why are you crying, old lady? How could I not cry, my dears? My husband is lying dead on the bench and I am left here to fend for myself alone. But do not mourn his loss, for he was a terrible rogue. But then one of the young men sighted a stick in the corner of the room and he could not resist giving the old man's body a prod. Take that, you scoundrel, for the money you stole from us. Then the old man leapt up and put his hands together in thanks. Oh, God bless you, gentlemen. Behold, now I believe in the miraculous power of the stick. Listen here. I was walking in the fields one day when I saw a dead dog lying there. I prodded the dead dog with this selfsame stick and it jumped up and ran away. But now I know better than ever that this stick has the power to perform miracles. Wife, give these young men all we possess and we will keep only this stick. Then, when a rich man dies, I will raise him back from the dead and be richly rewarded for my miraculous deed. Not so fast, the young men said. We don't want your possessions, we want your miraculous stick. The old man was not willing to hand it over at first, but then he agreed. You made fools of us once before, but never again. God bless you, old man. Then the old man laughed and gave them the stick. The young men were walking back through the village when they passed the house of the Count. There they saw a hearse and six horses about to set off in a funeral procession. So the young gentleman asked who was about to be buried. The people told them, why, the young countess, of course. There you can see her mother, father and handsome bridegroom standing behind the coffin. The young men did not waste a minute and ran up to the old countess. They demanded that she open the coffin that instant so they might raise the young countess from the dead. Then the old countess did as the young men said and promised them all the treasure she had if only they could bring her daughter back from the dead. So one of the young men approached the coffin and tapped the young countess lightly on the throat with a miraculous stick. She looked dead one minute and was alive the next. Everyone was delighted and now they would have a wedding instead of a wake. And they all ate and drank and had a very good time. The young men received a cart full of gold for their troubles and were so happy that they even gave the old man a sack of gold when they passed his house again. Strange as it may sound, they never tried their luck with the stick a second time because they still thought that the old man might have tricked them after all. So they all went back to school to complete their studies. So that is how this story ends. If you liked it, tell it to your friends.
Hungarian folk tales. The pin, the dog, the crayfish, the egg, and the cockerel. Once upon a time, a very long time ago, there was a little pin that was very bored in the sewing box. And the little pin thought it would go out and see the world. The pin walked and walked, and as it was walking along, it met a dog, and the dog said, Where are you going, friend? Why, I'm going out to see the world. Then I shall go with you too. Please do. They walked and walked, and as they were walking, they met a crayfish. The crayfish said, Where are you going to, friend? Why? I'm going out to see the world. Then I shall go with you too. Please do. They walked and walked and they were walking along when they met a rotten egg. The egg said, Where are you going, friend? Why, I'm going out to see the wide world. Then I shall go with you too. Please do. They walked and walked and they were walking when they met a cockerel. The cockerel said, Where are you going to, friend? Why, I'm going out to see the world. Then I shall go too. Please do. They walked and walked until they arrived in the back of beyond and night began to fall around them and the sky grew dark. The four of them looked for a place to lay their heads for the night, but they found themselves in a vast forest and searched and searched for a place to sleep. Then they caught sight of a cottage where they decided to go and ask for shelter. They walked into the cottage, but found that it was empty inside. It doesn't matter that no one's at home, we can still sleep here for the night. And each found a place to lay its head. The pin stuck into a towel, the egg rolled into the ashes, the crayfish sat in the wash basin, the cockerel roosted on top of the fence, and the dog lay down on the shady porch. Then they all fell fast asleep because they were tired from all the walking they had done that day. The cottage was owned by three foxes that had gone down into the town to steal chickens from farms as the darkness descended. Now the three foxes came running home. As they ran, twigs cracked under their feet and the cockerel heard them approaching and crowed a warning to its friends. The foxes stopped for a second when they heard the crowing, but then they ran quickly on. Then the dog took notice and began to bark. The foxes stopped again when they heard the dogs barking. What could be happening at the cottage, they thought. But then they carried quickly on. When the foxes arrived, the cockerel crowed, the dogs snapped at their heels, but they carried quickly on into the cottage. But a terrible surprise still awaited them. The father fox said to its son, quickly go and look for a coal in the ashes, that we can light a lamp and see what's happening in the cottage. 
one of the fox's sons went to the fireplace and sorted through the ashes. But the egg blew up in the fox's face, so it ran to the basin for water where the crayfish lay that pinched the fox hard. It tried and tried to shake the crayfish from its paw. It grabbed the towel to dry itself and the pin pricked it sharply. Run away! We need to run from this terrible place! And the foxes ran and ran and ran away and may still be running till this very day.